Alright, so in this video we're going to cover some of the basic matrix operations. So here I have four matrices. Matrix A, B and C are all of the order or dimensions 3 by 2. And matrix D has the dimensions 2 by 2. So two rows and two columns. Each of the first three has three rows and two columns. Now in my last video we covered the element notation to refer to specific entries in a matrix. So element A11 of the matrix A, I said in my last video that the first subscript refers to the row number and the second subscript refers to the column number. So we're looking for the entry in the first row and the first column which is equal to negative 2. Now this notation is perfectly valid when we have small matrices and the examples that I've shown here are all relatively small matrices. However, if you go into simulation in physics or engineering, you will encounter matrices that have thousands of rows and thousands of columns. So using this sort of notation can, be, can become confusing. So to clarify, we can separate the row and column with a comma. So we can still use little a to refer to an entry in the matrix A, and we can still use a first subscript to denote the row number, but we can separate the column number using a comma. So both of these notations are perfectly valid. Alright, so now that we've got that uh, bit of housekeeping out of the way, let's go on to adding two matrices together. So let's add the matrices A and B. Alright, so with matrix addition, all we do is add the corresponding elements of two matrices together to form the elements in the new matrix. So negative 2 and 2 add to give 0, 0 and negative 2 add to give negative 2, negative 1 and 0 add to give negative 1, 3 and negative 3 add to give 0, 3 and 1 add to give 4, and 2 and 0 add to give 2. So as you can see matrix addition is very straightforward but one important thing to remember is we can only add two matrices if they both have the same dimensions or if they both have the same order. So it would not be possible for us to add matrix A with matrix D. It's not defined because once we've added to the corresponding elements together we can see there's an extra row that we can't add because there is no third row in matrix D. Okay, so let's call this new matrix that we formed from the addition of A and B. Let's call this matrix E. Now what if we were to reverse this operation and add matrix B to matrix A? would we still expect to get the same answer as before and produce matrix E? Well, let's see about that. So again, 2 plus negative 2 equals 0. Negative 2 plus 0 equals negative 2. 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus 3 equals 0. 1 plus 3 equals 4. And 0 plus 2 equals 2. So as we can see, this matrix is exactly the same as this matrix, which equals matrix E. So what we have demonstrated is that matrix addition is commutative. So we'll say that for two matrices of the same order, they satisfy the law of commutativity. Alright, so for the sake of prosperity, let's add the matrices B and C. Actually, the real reason will become a little more apparent later on. And let's call this new matrix, matrix F. Alright, so now if we sum up all of matrices A, B and C, 
If I put a parenthesis around the addition of A and B, we know that the addition of matrix A and B equals the matrix E. So we are really adding matrix E and matrix C. So here we have 0 plus 6 equals 6, negative 2 plus 2 equals 0, negative 1 plus 2 equals 1, 0 plus 0 equals 0, 4 plus 3 equals 7, and 2 plus 0 equals 2. Let's call this matrix G. So with the addition of matrices A, B, and C, what if we change the order a little bit? So what if I put the parentheses around B and C? So in other words, if we add the matrices B and C first and then add A, would we still expect to get the same result as we found with matrix G? So with the addition of matrices B and C, we formed matrix F. So here we are adding matrix A and matrix F. Okay, so the resultant matrix is, we've got negative 2 and 8, which gives 6, 0 and 0 gives 0, negative 1 and 2 gives 1, 3 and negative 3 gives 0, 3 and 4 gives 7, and 2 and 0 ends up as 2. So as we can see, the resultant matrix is exactly the same as above, and again we have matrix G. So what that means is with the addition of matrices A, B and C, or the addition of any three matrices that have the same order, it doesn't matter where we put the parentheses or which ones we add first, we will still end up with the same result. So we say that matrix addition is associative. So in other words, matrix addition satisfies the law of associativity. Alright, so I'll leave this video here and we'll do some more basic operations in the upcoming videos. So if you found this to be helpful, please hit that like button and please subscribe for more videos that may help you with your math homework or assignments. And please share this with your friends as well if you have found it useful. Best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.